so good afternoon friends urinary incontinence is affecting more than one in every three women burden of the overactive bladder is increasing with the age as the age are increasing the prevalence of the overactive bladder is increasing worldwide more than 550 million people are suffering uh, in india 400 million people are suffering with the overactive bladder in india out of one in every three women out of one in every eight women are having or experiencing the incontinence the people who are younger than the 65 year their prevalence is the 10 to 30% and people over 65 years the prevalence is 30 to 55% today we are having the privilege to welcome dr nidhi nagar who has done the mbbs and md from the gmc hospital bhopal she did her icog fellowship in the gynec lepto surgery from the ahmedabad she is having the expertise in the complex lepto gynecological procedures and a special interest in the urogynecological surgeries dr nagar is currently working as a consultant gynecologist at bansal hospital bhopal she did various national and international publications and contributed as a author in chapters of gynecology and lepto scoping so we welcome dr nagar who has taken uh, her valuable time because this disease or overactive bladder require lot of uh, awareness among the people and i am very sure today session will help millions of the patients to understand their basic issues so welcome dr nagar for today's program on the leap with oab so overactive bladder is a condition where patient comes to us with the urgency to avoid so here the patient they have frequent uh, urination and along with that sometimes there is leakage of urine on urgency so every uh, i mean when the patient comes with the uh, number of times a more than eight number of times he has to pass you or she has to pass urine then it is called as overactive bladder and uh, uh, they are always in a seek of a washroom and in uh, night also sometimes there is frequency of urination more than once or twice okay okay so if the patient is having more than eight times uh, urination she may she or he may have the uh, problem of the overactive bladder madam right yes. so madam what causes an overactive bladder and how is an overactive bladder diagnosed see uh, there are multiple theories which are behind this uh, overactive bladder one is neurogenic theory one is muscular theory and all all these uh, none of these are able to you know uh, uh, tell us ki what is the reason but mostly it is seen in elderly people who are more than 40 years of age and then there are certain conditions uh, like uh, the number of deliveries increases the chances of overactive bladder in females then after menopause because of the deficiency of estrogen the bladder uh, becomes overactive because of some neurogenic innervation uh, uh, problems then uh, obese patients they uh, tend to have more chances of overactive bladder then there are certain uh, lifestyle uh, things which affects this like um, over intake of caffeine and alcohol and beverages containing caffeine they may cause overactive bladder oh so now yes yeah. to diagnose this condition we have to take a proper history from the patient we have to ask thoroughly about her uh, uh, voiding frequency then uh, regarding any other symptoms like in uh, we have to rule out urinary tract infections first of all in these patients because urinary tract infections mimic overactive bladder so first we have to urinary tract infection and other metabolic disorders like diabetes and other conditions like parkinson's disease and spinal cord injuries multiple sclerosis and there are multiple things which we have to rule out when these conditions are ruled out and patients still have a, a tendency to urge then this is called as overactive bladder okay so caffeine causes the overactive bladder madam this is the news for us i think most of the patients are not aware about this and uh, they consume the lot of teas and coffee uh, in a day so ma'am what are the treatment options for an overactive bladder see uh, treatment options first we have to uh, counsel the patient regarding 
the lifestyle modification. So first we start with lifestyle modification, lifestyle changes, which they which they need to do in uh, uh, do in like. Uh, if the patient is obese, they, uh, she is asked to lose her weight. If she has, uh, if she is consuming lots of caffeine or alcohol and beverages containing caffeine, then we ask to cut short that. Then, <clears throat> then uh, we come to uh, a certain uh, exercises, which is called as pelvic floor exercises, Kegels exercises, which we advise them. Then, if it is not controlled by uh, these lifestyle modifications, then we prescribe drugs. And in drugs, we have. Uh, uh, anti-muscarinic drugs, anti-cholinergic drugs, which is the first line of choice. Then we have beta-3 agonist drugs also, and so on. And ma'am, we have also seen that the most of the patient do not complain about the overactive bladder. They consider it as a part of the their age, and because this is happening more in the 65 year plus patient, so. Uh, how then doctor will know that uh, this patient is having overactive bladder and how the doctors can help to these old age patients? Yes, because overactive bladder is not life-threatening. And uh, and because uh, patients in India and mostly as it is uh, mostly found in women, so they are very shy to come to us. Right. And is a social stigma which is attached to this condition because this is uh, this is a situation which embarrasses the patient. So the patient they are hesitant about uh, you know telling their problems to their family members as well. So in such patients like any menopausal women or a patient who has undergone normal vaginal delivery, we always ask positively about these complaints. So sometimes patient has come to us with some other problem, but when we are taking a proper history. Then they, you know, reveal us that yes, doctor, I'm suffering from this problem as well. So proper history taking is a key in this condition because in history taking only we can, you know, diagnose this condition properly and treat her. Uh, so, madam, which medications are used to treat an overactive bladder? Uh, medications in medications we have uh, various uh, medicines and mostly the first line of therapy is anti-muscarinic agents like fesotoridine. Fesor Tolteridine, so solenifenacin, and so so uh, there is a long list of medicine. So anti-muscarinic is the drug of choice. Then uh, some patients we have to you know make a, a combination of drugs uh, to be patients, and then those who are not relieved by medication, then we have surgical uh, treatment also, like uh, botulinum toxin injections and so on. So anti-muscarinics are the first drug of choice in these patients. Madam, in medicines, there are side effects bhi hai because most of the uh, patients complain many things and they leave, uh, they drop the taking the medicines on the regular basis. Yes. Anti muscarinic drugs, they have, yes, the uh, see anything which has effect has side effects. So, any drug which is a, if, uh, doing a good effect has side effects as well. So, yes, side effects are there. So, with anti muscarinic drugs, the most common side, side effect is uh, dryness of mouth. Then there is uh, constipation and uh, uh, acidity, and then there are cert uh, uh, certain other. Uh, if they are taking, there are uh, interaction with other drugs. Are. So yes, side effects are there. But uh, comparing to side effects, if the patient is, you know, get uh, ask the patient to continue these drugs. Okay. So, madam, can overactive bladder ko permanently cure kiya ja sakta hai? Uh, when patient when we have to have to counsel the patient we have to first. Have to counsel the patient. We have to tell we have to tell that this can not hundred percent possible. This is uh, this is this can be controlled cured. But there are chances that if the patient is you know uh, properly following our instructions and doing lifestyle modifications, plus if they are taking drug properly without a miss then they can control this problem up to 80%. But okay. there is never a 100%. So this has to be explained to the patient before, you know, starting treatment. Okay. So when the patient should start visiting or seeing the gynecologist uh, for this problem, uh, it is just general calculation of the eight frequency of the eight urination in a day or they should wait more or some other symptoms patient feel, then they should, now this is the time when patient should visit the doctor. 
Yes. Uh, so uh, when see, uh, I ask uh, these patients uh, to you know uh, maintain a bladder diary. So a bladder diary has to be maintained. And if in bladder diary, if uh, the number of void is more than eight, and number of uh, if uh, the sleep of a patient is disturbed in night, if she has to go to pass urine every you know three to four times in a night, and if it is disturbing her sleep. And if there is leakage of urine, like if she is unable to control and if she is not unable to reach a washroom, before reaching a washroom, she leaks, then these are certain conditions where she, is, she has to definitely come to a doctor. Okay. okay. And ma'am, how I can prevent an overactive bladder from the getting worse? And uh, as you have said, the Kegel exercise and the pelvic flow, are uh, they can manage the an overactive bladder. So... Uh, if I am doing the exercise regularly and I am taking the medicines, so it's still so symptoms can be controlled or the further it can get worse also. And what are the symptoms for those things, madam? See, uh, yes. So uh, to avoid these conditions, patient again is you know uh, asked to modify her lifestyle by losing weight, then by doing kegels and pelvic floor, floor exercises. And then so, uh, there is a myth uh, among patients that we have to drink a lot of plenty of water. Mm. So the limited amount of water one needs. So it is 2 to 2.5 liters, means 7 to 8 glass of water in a day. If she is drinking more than this, then she needs to pass urine more. So in a day, not more than 2.5 liter water is necessary. So some patients, they are taking more of, uh, you know, 3 to 4 or 5 to 6 liters of water and then they they are com coming to us with this problem. So this uh, uh, myths and this education of patient is very important. So patient must be educated regarding the intake of water. Then she needs to, everyone has to keep a bladder diary. If, if anyone is having this complaint, they need to uh, put a, uh, uh, take, take a uh, diary and, you know, uh, number of times she has voided, she has to write down. Then uh, how, man how much intake she is taking then how many times she has to wake up in night and go to a loo. Then this bladder diary is going to tell us that whether it is a, a condition to be treated or uh, or not. Okay, okay. So patient can maintain the blood diary, uh, bladder diary to uh, see the how the disease is progressing. Ma'am, if it is not untreated, so uh, what complications can be there? If patient doesn't take the treatment of the overactive bladder, Though it can lead to further any complications? See, overactive bladder is sometimes because of uh, conditions which are uh, in the urinary bladder. And very important condition needs to be ruled out is the bladder cancers. So if you oversee this condition, so there, uh, there might be a chance that there is a bladder cancer developing inside the urinary bladder. So we have uh, you never have to ignore these symptoms. So we have to come to a doctor if we you have any kind of symptoms like this. So the doctor is going to rule out everything and then uh, you can manage the condition. Okay. So ma'am, what is the message uh, you want to give to the public uh, regarding the awareness and what they should do when they have the such symptoms? Uh, in India... Uh, in Asia, uh, I will say that 53.3% of population is suffering from this condition and very few patients come to us with this problem. They don't take it as a primary uh, 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 unless they have, you know, menorrhagia or pain in abdomen. They take these conditions as severe conditions, not the frequency of urination. So the no, uh, uh, awareness in the patient is very important. So when a patient, I, I must request doctors also who, uh, who are gynecologists and urologists. So the, so the patients who are, uh, they are coming to us, we always educate them and ask them positively about these conditions because the patients are very shy to tell us about their uh, bladder habits. So in 50% uh, of population are suffering from this. And so we, uh, the public awareness is the most important thing which needs to be done. So, patient so that has, the yeah. patient can come to they have to break the silence as well as the stigma uh, in the conveying the problem to the doctor. Right, madam? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, madam, uh, you have mentioned about the many drugs of the anti-muscarinic and lifestyle. 
so if you can elaborate little bit on these drug part uh, that uh, now the newer drugs are also available in the market so i think the with the development of the new drug the side effects are getting reduced and the efficacies are also uh, improving so patient can have the better compliance if you can yes. just highlight, highlight something so we have uh, anti muscarinic drugs as i told you is the drug of choice so here we have uh, plenty of uh, drugs like uh, if we talk about fesoriteridine which comes as uh, with a brand name of fesobig so it is given uh, in a dose of 4 mg it is started and a patient uh, has to be told that this is going to be a long therapy like it has to be taken for uh, you know 6 to 12 months to show it, show an effect it ha- and it has uh, now drugs they are coming they have li- very little side effects so the patient compliance is more with this kinds of drugs so now the newer drugs which are coming are more you know potent and with less side effects then uh, beta 3 agonists are also there but the anti muscarinic sometimes you have to combine drugs like anti muscarinics and beta uh, agonist as well so it depends upon the it, it depends upon patient to patient he, by which drug they are responding well okay, okay, okay. thank you madam for your suggestion and um, as you have suggested for the bladder diary can make a big difference to the patient compliance and their life with the oab so we will try to do our best also to make it available to the as many as uh, number of the patient so they can maintain their everyday stay and that will help the doctors also in the diagnosis of the disease and uh, the better quality of life with the for the patients so madam thank you very much for your valuable time uh some of the questions are there so that we will share with you also in the later on uh if the patient will ask and then we will make a booklet and then we can share with those uh, patients with this thank you very much for your valuable time and Thanks. i hope you must have enjoyed this also and uh, this will be live on the facebook so the as well as on the youtube so more and more patient can watch later on this thank you madam thank you very much thank you